Hey guys, and welcome back to Clannad. So in the last episode, uh, we were handed a fucking Old Testament by Katomi. Enough with this religious bullshit, man. <laughs> Amen. I politely cite it and place the book on the desk. By the way, are you Christian? And also, there's a Quran here. It's a bestseller in some countries. Uh, this one is the Ramayana. It's a bestseller in some countries. As she's just giving us religious books and calling them bestsellers. The fuck is wrong with you, Katomi? They're religious texts! Oh my god! They're all very, very wonderful books. Huh. A personal religious war. Do you read anything without a care in the world? Mm. Yep. She answers without even hesitating. Is this proof that she genuinely likes reading? Don't you have any much thinner books that a guy like me can read? If that's the case... She looks at me. Well, she ponders for a while. She's in deep thought as she looks at me. Oh God. Well, it seems she's finally, or she finally has something in mind. Thanks a lot, Katomi. There might be nothing that you can read right now. Thanks a lot for that heartless reply. Exactly! Ugh. I get it. I'll go search for something I'd like to read. I'll help you. It's alright. I stop her from following me with my palm. If she were to choose what I would read, I think my brain would probably evaporate in an instant. You just read your books. So I don't want to bother you. <laughs> Okay, I understand. Leaving her to that place, I enter the ravine of the bookshelves. It's dark because the fluorescent lamp is off, and it feels cool. The books are packed together from left to right. I don't have any idea how they're arranged. I look around a narrow path. I find the shelf where novels are stored and pull one from the shelf. I start skimming through it from the back cover. It's a book written by a foreign writer for children, and it's about war. Well, I guess this one should be fine. Katomi's already immersing herself in reading as I go back to my chair. I feel quite relieved, so I open the front cover of the book I chose. Hmm. Three minutes have passed. It seems like a very formal philosophy book. The words used are old, too. I don't think any person would be excited reading this kind of book. I wonder if reading too many tragic and murder case books would make you a more developed person. I think of those things as I make my big yawn, or make a big yawn. I close my eyes. I feel a soft light touching my eyelids. And I'm immediately struck by sleepiness. My ears are all clear. And all I can hear are the page she's, or the page she's flipping. It makes me feel like I'm in a sandy beach, listening to the ocean waves. Well, this is a new color. What? Okay. Somebody seems to be putting out some fire. It just continues to eat everything in its surroundings, no matter how much water is put in it. The orange flame sways around, and somebody's crying over there. Some adults have finally come and immediately put out the fire, and there, are pr and there, protected by someone's back, is someone crying, covering her face with a small palm. All she does is cry. Oh. I woke up. I realized that I was dreaming. I don't quite remember it, though. It left a little feeling of regret in the depths of my head. It might be because I've been spending my Sunday afternoon doing nothing but sleep. It's about time I go home. I stand up and look around. It's evening. The library's wall 
floor, and even every corner are covered in golden light. And inside that world is her, reading some book. It doesn't seem like she's noticed me and keeps on flipping the page. I'm about to go home now. No reply. Hey, Katomi. No reply, just as I thought. If it comes to this, I have to resort to my last card. Katomi, John. Her hand stops from flipping the page. She raises her head and slowly looks towards me. Tomoya. We look at each other as if there's no meaning to it. It's quite embarrassing. We have to go home now. Eh, eh, to... eh? Well, it seems she's finally back to reality. Then she looks at the wall clock. It's still quite all right, I think. Wouldn't your family members worry? Eh, to... Well, she hasn't completely replied yet. I guess she's still not done reading. But I can't just leave a girl like her to such an unpopular place like this. Why don't you continue reading tomorrow? It seems she finally has a reply as I say that. Mm. So sure. Yep, I'll do that. Then she closes her book and stands up. I stand still on the corner of the street. Both of us kept silent from when we were or from when we left the library until we came here. But I didn't feel bad about that. The evening breeze blows up through the mountain. It's quite cold if you compare it to afternoon breeze. Her childlike hair ornaments are fluttering around. Suddenly, I drop my gaze at the two shadows on the road just up ahead. Which way are you heading? <laughs> I'm asking which direction are you going to get home? Anyway, I'm going this way. I'm going this way. She points out the opposite direction. There are a few cars running around the street, so I think she'll be fine. Well then, take care. また See you tomorrow. 明日. Yeah. See you tomorrow, Katomi. I raise my hand and wave lightly at, er, lightly at her, and then start walking. Katomi's just standing still holding on to her bag with nine books stuffed in it, staring straight at me. What is it? Nothing. I'll be waiting tomorrow. And I'll bring you some boxed lunch. Yeah, I understand. That's what I answer. I'll be looking forward to it, all right? She smiles shyly as we bathe inside the sunset's glow. Then she starts walking. She walks alone at a quick pace, and her back immediately becomes smaller. This is just like yesterday evening, when she was going home with an umbrella in her hand. Perhaps she won't stop by any place and go straight home. I wonder if she really doesn't have any friends. I shake my head as I mutter it to myself. Doing an investigation isn't my hobby. I stretch my left hand out towards the vast ending er, evening sky. Whoops. <laughs> Tomorrow is another school day. For some reason, I remember that girl I met at the foot of the hill. That female student whose goals is the drama club. To begin with, that club is no longer active. I only heard it once when someone was childishly gossiping about it. But even still... I wonder if she will do it alone. Something flashes in my mind as I think of that. I try to rethink my conversation with Katomi. If I remember correctly, she said that she hasn't joined any clubs. That put a smile on my face for some reason. I'll, or I'll talk to her first before I go to the library. That means I'll attend school tomorrow. The, my usual habit somehow depresses me. Well then... I stretch slightly and start walking as well. And it's the next day! Monday. I suddenly feel weak. I'm going to have another boring lesson which I can't refuse. Once the school term ends, will I even have the will to work? Will I actually graduate? 
I don't think that's going to happen. Still, I think that it's convenient that I can just attend class without worrying about the future. Continuing to work in order to eat, I don't think I'd be able to forgive myself for living a pathetic life like that. Just thinking about it makes me shiver. But I only need to endure one more year of this. I glance at the clock. It's still early. Enough time to make it to first period. Not that I really feel like going. Uh... Uh, let's, uh, get out of bed. It's meaningless. These depressing thoughts force me awake. If I just lie here, it'll only get worse. Guess I'd better get moving. Shaking off those heavy thoughts, I lift myself out of bed. Third period is over. It's like we've had break time. Uh, since the only things the teacher said were funny things. I talk to some students in the hallway and ask if they know the name of the female student who has recently returned to this school. Ah, uchi no class. Furuka, daro? Ah, she's probably from, or she's from my class. Probably Furukawa? He looks at his partner as if saying, Bingo! B -gumi da yo. She's in class B. Having heard only that, I head to that place. I peek at the door and look inside. I immediately spot Furukawa. Over there, sitting alone in the chair, away from the chatting students. Furukawa! Furukawa! I call to her with a soft voice. She looks around as she immediately notices my calling. Over here! Here! Oh. She rushes to me as I signal her to come. I'm surprised! How come you know my name? Well, I asked one of your classmates just now. So I'm I see. I want to know your name, too. Mine? Hi. Yes. Okazaki. Okazaki-san. Yeah. Okazaki-san, Okazaki-san, Okazaki is there something you want? What happened to your plan about the drama club? Oh, uh, well... The drama club is gone now. Yeah, I just remembered. Well, have you given up? Oh, Well, not really. I'm practicing alone. In the club room? Yes, I cleaned up the room without permission, though. I see. All right, then. Wait for me in the club room after school. Hi. Yes? The bell starts ringing. The students standing in the hallway go to their respective rooms one by one. There are also students giving us glances as we stand. Anyway, I have some things to do after school, so please wait for me inside the club room. I'll tell you the full details later then. Hi. Okay. I leave Furukawa, who seems dubious, and also leave Class B. Alright then. Slipping out during lessons is troublesome. So I decide to ditch fourth period. Going through the hallway, I walk, or I walk up to the toilet. I go inside a private room and let a few sounds of the teacher's slippers pass by. There isn't anyone in the hallway when I return. Only the tension during classes is leaking uh, pleasantly in the uh, linoleum floor. Yeah, on the linoleum floor. Squatting in front of the bread stall before. It opens up. I earnestly wait and let the time pass by. Without uh, Waiting without moving makes me hungry instead. I think it would have been better if I had bought bread this morning, but I guess it's already too late. I wonder if Katomi's in the library now. I wonder what kind of bread she likes. I don't usually eat sweet bread. I wonder if I should buy one. Aww. I raise my head as I'm taken aback by a sound. My eyes meet with the old lady lining up the bread in the tray. I'd like, er, I'd like some bread, ma'am. Oh yeah, ma. Chotto hayasugiru ne. Oh my, you're quite early. 
After she says that, she snickers. An appetite of a growing child, right? Well, I'll take anything you like. Thanks to my early class stitching, I can buy those popular ones like cho- or cocoa bread and cutlet sandwich. After paying for the bread, I head to the vending machine to buy some green tea. With a proper bag full of goods in my hand, I head to the library. Tomoya-kun, konnichiwa. Hello, Tomoya-kun. She quickly heads to me and greets me as I enter the library. Yeah, you're quite energetic today. I unintentionally groan as I glance at the table. Placed on it isn't the usual small Tupperware, but a boxed lunch that you usually carry when having a picnic. For how many people is that? Kotomi-chan to Tomoya-kun de. For Kotomi-chan and Tomoya-kun. Hey, aren't we going to share our food? Hmm. Hanbun ko shite taberu no. Yep, both of us are going to share our food. She happily repeats my words. If you make a boxed lunch for two people, then that would mean we now have food for three people. Hmm? Huh? It doesn't seem like she no- or she's noticed it. Ah, so ka. Ah, I see. Tomoya-kun, atama ii na. Tomoya-kun, you're smart. You saying that to me makes me feel wor- or makes me feel <laughs> worried. I guess it's fine. I'm quite hungry now, so let's hurry and eat. I drag a nearby chair and sit. Hmm. <laughs> Tabeyo? Yep, let's eat. She sits next to me. She opens the boxed lunch. Sliced salmon, fried chicken, fried shrimp, chicken saute, hamburger, fried eggs, small tomato, fried potato. The boxed lunch is crammed with plenty of food with no space left. Isn't this for four people? It'd be fine if you eat a lot. She says that as if it doesn't matter. Well, I'll do my best then. Don't get angry if I can't eat all of it. Hmm. Kore Tomoya-kun no hashi. Yup. These chopsticks are for Tomoya-kun. Sore de ne, watashi no hashi wa kore. And these chopsticks are for me. Te o awasete kudasai. Let's put our hands together. Like the elementary school lunch duty saying goes, hold both hands like this. Oh wait, that's her. Whoops. Oopsie. <laughs> oh well. I join the flow as the result. Tadakimashou. Let's all eat. Let's eat. Sameshiagare. Well, please help yourself. I take my chopsticks and am lost to which one I'll eat first. I take the fried chicken first and put it in my mouth. I savor its taste as I eat it. I see. Is it delicious? Yeah, it's good. She gives me a smile as I answer. This is really embarrassing. Hey, do you have something you like or dislike? What I'm talking about is food, alright? Mm-hmm. No, I don't prefer anything. I'll eat any food. If so, choose anything you like. I put all the bread I've bought in front of her. Mm-hmm. You look like someone who hasn't seen any of these. Mm-hmm. She takes one of one in her hand opens it and pulls out the contents. She's staring at it for some reason. That's a cream corn or cornet. This is a cocoa bread. This one is a cutlet sandwich with teriyaki chicken. And this is an egg sandwich. <sighs> she turns it upside down and peeks inside. The only thing you'll see in there is cream. She doesn't listen to what I say and this time takes the sandwich. I let her do what she likes. I take out the portion of what looks like pumpkin stew at the corner of the lunchbox. It also tastes good. Did you cook this yourself? Hey, what are you doing? Hmm? Stop analyzing your food. This isn't a science experiment. Oh. Don't put it back inside like it hasn't been opened. <laughs> Don't look at me with eyes that have run out of reasons. So, how what should I do then? Just eat it. She nods. She bites one of the breads and starts munching. Is it good? 
とってもとってもおいしいの。It's really delicious. She chews and stares at me while she re- or as she replies to me. It's just ordinary bread, you know. I always eat boxed lunch, that's why. Do you always cook it yourself? Mm hmm. I see. You're quite amazing. Mm. She's still gazing at the sandwich. She carefully divided the sandwich in two. Tomoya kun. Hi. Tomoya kun. Here. And this is where I'm gonna leave it off. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to become part of the Like See Today. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.